today we're going to focus on the human capital uh, challenge for the future and some useful uh, strategies for managing uh, human capital. So I will start with 10 challenges for the audience and anybody who is associated with the acquisition of human talent, the nurture and development, the engagement and the retention should be able to answer these 10 questions. Uh, to start with, uh, what is so good about us? Uh, any organization around the world will need to reevaluate what is critical for attraction of the right human talent and that is the reputation and the global standing of the organization itself. And the mindset of uh, talented people is also what's in it for them. So the second question is why should I be interested in considering a job uh, in this place? The third question perhaps is what reputation has the company got in comparison with other employers? In other words, what is the level of attractiveness, comma, uniqueness, and perhaps uh, the magnet that uh, will make people gain interest and consider uh, joining uh, the organization? The fourth question is, what are our distinctive and unique features? What makes us famous? What makes us known widely? What makes us attract positive publicity? Uh, these are all critical uh, things that a potential employee, a talented human capital, uh, uh, will ask for. They are the shoppers, they are the ones who are looking for good value, and they are the ones who can choose. The fifth question is, what kind of work climate has our company got? We have to bear in mind that people take this extremely seriously. They are joining a culture. They will work in a particular climate. They will have to adapt and relate to other people. They will have to fit in and get assimilated. And they have to articulate the values of the organization. Number six is, has the organization got a culture of uh, teamwork, for instance? Teamwork synergizes, reassures, guides, uh, leads to uh, the passion being ignited and also stimulates. So unless there is a culture that is thriving, uh, that is positive, uh, that is inclusive, it will be very difficult to attract modern and uh, capable talent. The question number seven is, what is the commitment to invest in my own growth and development? Uh, an asset, insofar as human capital is concerned, is supposed to accrue and not depreciate. So individuals who have ambitions want to see a clear career path, they want to advance, they want to be exposed to new challenges and they want to gain uh, new skills as well. Number eight, it, what are the advantages and benefits that I can receive or expect to receive? The millennials generation, for instance, will ask this question without hesitation. They will even and develop a thick skin during negotiations because these matters are important to them. They will not sacrifice without gains and without benefits. And unless these are explicitly clear and they are compared and contrasts, contrasted with other packages offered by competitors, then it will be futile to try and convince able people to join the organization. Number nine is how ambitious is the organization in achieving world-class status? 
this is important. Uh, it doesn't matter where the organization is at the moment. It's the level of ambition that ignites passion. It is the desire to achieve that uh, really make the millennial uh, generation particularly wish to join, wish to partake and wish to be engaged. And the last question is really how seriously committed is the leadership team to bringing success? For instance, is there a commitment to invest in modern infrastructure? Is there a, a commitment to revamp the organization and disrupt the status quo in order to accelerate momentum and achieve at the highest level possible? This intent goes beyond words and it really shows the desire and the passion that exists within the leadership team to uh, steer their organization towards competitive success and achieve a dominant position. To follow on from the previous session, which looked at the significance of human capital management using 10 critical uh, questions, we will now use a whistle tour via what has been referred to as the human resources wheel for talent uh, centricity. This wheel basically is driven by the life cycle perspective of managing human capital management. Each element of this life cycle is extremely critical and needs a systematic way and a smart philosophy and pragmatic strategy for making sure that human capital management is managed against the best standards in the world and with the intention basically to gain and not to lose. So the life cycle is about attracting um, the, the level of interest, acquiring the blend of skills and expertise level that can serve the present, but more importantly, that can build the future. Engaging uh, human talent is a prerequisite. We don't spend on bringing talented people to watch them erode and not use the potential that exists and apply the skills that they have learned and developed over the years. As we said before, human capital as an asset grows and not depreciates. So one of the best way to measure the effectiveness of managing human capital is to look at the level of growth that is induced year in, year out in all the critical areas of uh, the organization's activities. If the culture is conducive to superior performance, if there is commitment to have engagement as an open-ended process, if value orientation is really the way engagement is driven, and if the climate of work is motivational and leads to employee happiness, we should see the results therefore in the level of satisfaction certainly, but also in terms of the retention rate. An organization that has a happy culture, that treats its human capital as the most critical asset, that invests in its development and retention, will see that the level of attrition is extremely low. And the cycle kicks off again by searching and attracting, acquiring, engaging, growing and retaining again. Let's now very quickly consider the core and critical elements of this talent strategy, centricity uh, that needs to be um, institutionalized. To start with is having a clear uh, HR strategy that um, is based on present and future needs 
but one that reflects the ethos of the organisation, articulates the policies well, uh, where the hardware in terms of processes, comma procedures and the operational aspects are taken care of. But more importantly, where the effort is geared towards managing human resources at the core and with an optimum uh, level. So the HR management strategy is critical to impact on an organization's performance and it's one that contributes directly to the creation of a competitive advantage. It must have a long-term focus, it has to be led from the top and it has to have a general framework that guides promotes and preserves the employee centricity philosophy at all levels uh, and on a sustainable basis. It was found that 85% of all the firms in the US for, for example uh, are service oriented because they understand that service is delivered by uh, people and it was also correlated that in cases where there is low quality of human resources, uh, this leads to low, low quality customer service. However, in the 21st century, having talented people who are up to date in terms of their knowledge and they possess the latest uh, skills, this is directly translated to the generation of a competitive advantage and to the generation of high profits because knowledge uh, comes from uh, uh, people who are employed by the organization. So the vertical fit, which is a bottom-up one, is that uh, the whatever systems are designed in so far as HR is concerned and the strategy that drives the uh, people's centricity uh, philosophy must be in tandem with uh, the business strategy and if uh, in the case of large organizations, uh, this operational strategy has to fit with a corporate strategy. The horizontal fit is really the life cycle management of human capital by putting the right systems um, for appraisal, uh, reward and recognition, by growing and developing uh, through training and skill renewal, and uh, by uh, putting the right culture uh, for uh, ensuring that there is stimulation, there is engagement and overall there is happiness. So in a sense, uh, the old uh, HRM practice uh, is still valid and uh, must be used and um, it has to reflect a modern business context however. Uh, first of all, uh, the alignment is um, that learning is relative and is not absolute and therefore uh, we have to measure the alignment of learning and development within the business in a disruptive environment. This needs to be revisited more often than before. Learning has to be integrated with the existing processes and uh, HR policies uh, and it should not uh, be behind and certainly it should not be too advanced or vice versa. Uh, flexible, uh, agile and um, adaptable organization needs to be malleable and uh, configurable and uh, uh, learning drives and it's not the other way around. Same thing can be said about uh, the creation of uh, a learning culture. It, it should not dry up and it should not uh, be uh, based on uh, uh, incrementalism in terms of modernization uh, change uh, and um, uh, freshness in terms of new thinking. It should be thriving, it should be uh, a culture that offloads the old, brings in the new and uh, capable by itself uh, uh, to be healthy 
uh, to be current and to be uh, adaptable. Customization and individualization of um, engagement needs to be supported by providing appropriate learning uh, options. Uh, indeed, um, people learn in different ways and for different purposes with different interests. Uh, and uh, uh, the options need to be available to support people uh, for the short term but also for the long term. The management of learning has to be effective and should not be centralized or highly rigid and uh, overstructured. Uh, it has to uh, also happen um, in anecdotal manners, um, in informal basis, um, out of work. Um, opportunities should be encouraged and uh, whatever opportunity that exists needs to be weighed in and explored as a possibility. Having the right support application for skills in the workplace means to modernize the infrastructure and to make sure that social media plays a critical role uh, with digital technology um, permeating every organization uh, more significantly every day this should be considered uh, as a critical way uh, of preserving uh, the learning and development of an organization. And lastly, the evaluation of learning and development uh, needs to be done in tangible and intangible way and not necessarily by looking at efficiency-based measures but looking at uh, distinctiveness in terms of the capabilities, uh, the, the knowledge possessed and also the value of the human capital that is developed. Lastly, uh, the organization development uh, philosophy uh, must really be to create a sustainable organization that can guide itself, that can create a future uh, with renewal, with reinvention, with foresightedness and with um, this employee orientation uh, where the asset is clearly defined and understood and where the ability of the organization to protect the distinctive uh, talent that it has and maintain the competitive advantage that it has created for itself.